In this lesson, we're going to talk about equilibrium constants and pressure. The basic idea here is that when we have gaseous reactants and products, we can actually use something called partial pressures to write our equilibrium expressions. Now that sounds like a lot, so let's take a few moments here and figure out what exactly I'm saying. Let's start with a review of what equilibrium is. Here we have N2O4 as a reactant, and notice this G here tells us it's in the gas phase. And what's happening in this reaction is N2O4 is falling apart into NO2. Notice again, the G indicates that we have the gas phase. So all that's happening in this reaction is a molecule is falling apart. Recall that the forward backwards arrows means the reaction can run both ways. So N2O4 can run forward into NO2, or two NO2s can combine to run backwards into an N2O4. And because it's dictated by this forward backwards equilibrium reaction, at the end of the reaction, when it comes to completion, we're going to have some ideal balance between reactants and products. That's exactly what our equilibrium expression tells us. What is that ideal balance between reactants and products? On the right-hand side here, we have a representation of this reaction as it approaches equilibrium. We start at time equals zero, and at time equals zero, we have all in 204, which is, remember, our reactant. It's represented here by a collection of spheres four red spheres, which represent oxygen, and two blue spheres, which represent nitrogen. And as time goes forward, we see some products start to form. So here we've allowed time to go forward, but we're still not at equilibrium. And what we can see is that several of our N2O4 molecules have fallen apart to form one, two, three, four NO2s. So we've started to form some product, but we're still not at equilibrium, which means product is going to continue to be formed. And when we go to our at equilibrium picture, we can see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight NO2s. And now that apparently, for this particular reaction, is the right balance between reactants and products. This is different than our 1211 chemical reactions, which would always run all the way to completion. Notice we still have some reactants here, but we're no longer going to continue to change this balance of reactants and products. And that's what it means to be at equilibrium. We've kind of reached the finish point of this reaction. Now, technically, we still see some exchange between reactants and products here. So some reactants become products, some products become reactants. But on the whole, the balance doesn't change. They occur at equal rates, in other words. We can picture this with concentration curves. And here we see that we have N2O4 represented in the blue curve. And it starts out pretty high. It's our reactant. And it drops over time. And we have NO2. It's our product. And it starts out at zero. And it increases over time. And represented here in the yellow frame is our equilibrium. At some point in the future, those concentrations stop changing when there's an ideal balance between reactants and products. Now, because this is a gas phase reaction, we have the option to write our equilibrium constant in partial pressures. And that's really what we're going to practice in this video. So let's try to write Q and KP for the following expressions. This little KP precisely just means we're going to do it in terms of pressures instead of concentration. So if you see KC, Kc tells us we're going to do it in terms of concentrations, which are those things with brackets. And Kp means we're going to do it in terms of partial pressures, which means we'll use big Ps. Let's take a look at that. All right, so let's write Q first. And Q can be written in terms of partial pressures or concentrations, either way. We always do products on top, recall. And so we're going to put NO2 up top. Now, if I was doing it the old-fashioned way that we learned in the last video, I would use brackets. Brackets, NO2. And that means concentration, so particularly molarity, moles per liter. But because we're in the gas phase, if we want, we can also use partial pressures. And so let's do that. And the way we write the partial pressures is we write a big P, which stands for pressure. And then we write a little NO2, which tells us which pressure we're monitoring. Remember that partial pressures basically just split up all the different pressures in our gas mixture in terms of what they come from. So this is just the pressure that comes from NO2. And then we have to go ahead and square that because of our stoichiometric coefficient. Remember, the big number up front there is called a stoichiometric coefficient. It's 2, so I put a 2 up here. So my products go up top, my reactants go on the bottom. Again, I'm going to use a big P, and I'm going to use N2O4 to tell you which pressure I'm talking about. And the stoichiometric coefficient, the number up front is 1 here. There's always an implied 1 if there's not a number written, so we put a 1 there. So that's Q in terms of partial pressures. Now, KP looks exactly the same. I'm just going to put KP equals products up top, PNO2 to the second, and PN2O4 to the first. Now, the only difference between these two is Q is always defined. So even when I start a reaction, I have a Q. 
K is only for the very specifically the end point of the reaction. It's like the finish line of our reaction as we discussed in the last lesson. Okay, so that's how we write Q and KP. Let's look at the systematic definitions for this, which are a little annoying, but are helpful when we go to think about writing them for other equations. So here, we just have a chemical reaction represented in terms of A and B as our reactants and C and D as our products. M and N and X and Y are our stoichiometric coefficients. So always what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our stoichiometric coefficients and write them as our exponents. So for example, we see that the partial pressure of C goes with X, so we're gonna put an X there. And the partial pressure of D is going to have the Y in its exponent. And then we'll put M with A because it's up there next to A and N with B. So this is just kind of the generic formula for writing these things. Now, again, just like we saw with the concentration expressions, we're always going to drop liquids and solids. So we don't include liquids and solids in our equilibrium expressions. The reasons for that are a little complicated, and you can read your textbook there if you want to know more about that. Okay, so we always drop those liquids and solids. Let's practice. So here we're gonna write Kp for each of the reactions below. It's a good idea here for you to just pause and go ahead and give it a try on your own. Okay, so let's go ahead and write them. We'll see if you got them right. Kp is equal to, we write the pressures up top. So we have P N two raised to the first power. And then we have P H two raised to the third power. On the bottom, we get P N H three, because that's our reactant and it's raised to the second power. So there we go for the first one. Let's do the second one. Again, Kp equals, put our line up top, we get our reactants, which is SO2 raised to the second power, and then the pressure of oxygen raised to the first power. On the bottom, our reactant, which is SO3 raised to the second power. Notice all of these are in the gas phase, so Kp is appropriate for all of them. You can keep, see these in Kc as well, and that's totally fine. It just depends what the problem gives you, which one you're gonna use. If it gives you pressures, use partial pressures. If it gives you concentrations, use Kc. Now up top, we're gonna to have our only product, which is NOCl. We're gonna put our big P here, and we're gonna raise that to the second power. And then on the bottom, we have PNO raised to the second power, and PCl2 raised to the first power. So that's writing a few different KPs. Okay, last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna practice this to see if a chemical reaction is at equilibrium or not. So this says the following reaction has a KP of 4.5 times 10 to the minus five. That means we have a pretty small Kp, right? 10 to the negative 5 is much, much less than 1. And so that means it's going to favor reactants. Recall that small Ks favor reactants and big Ks favor products. And it says if the reaction vessel is filled with each gas to the partial pressures listed below, in which direction will it shift to reach equilibrium? So just like the problems we've done where we compared Q and K. Okay, so how do we do this problem? First, we calculate Q, and then we compare Q versus K. So let's see where we're at in our reaction. Are we before the finish line or after the finish line? For after the finish line, we're gonna run backwards, and that's when Q is greater than K. Or if we're before the finish line, that's when Q is less than K, we're gonna run forward. So first, let's write down Q and then compute it. Just like we saw on the previous slides, Q is equal to our big partial pressure for NH3, which is our only product, divided by the partial pressure for hydrogen, which we cube, because there's a three in front of it, times the partial pressure of nitrogen, which we raise to the first power. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and calculate the numerical value of Q at the time when we have these partial pressures. So we'll notice that NH3 is 93 ATM, so we're gonna put 93 raised to the second power. And then on the bottom, we're gonna go ahead and put the partial pressure of hydrogen, which is 52, and that's gonna be raised to the third power, times the partial pressure of nitrogen, which is 48, and that's just gonna be raised to the first power. When we compute that, we get 0 0.00128, okay? And just like our KCs, our KPs are gonna be unitless, so no units there. And now what we need to do is compare that to our KP. Well, we're given our KP directly, it's 4.50 times 10 to the minus five. And just to make the comparison easier, we're gonna go ahead and put that into standard notation. So we'll say 4.5, and then we need to move the decimal five times. One, two, three, four, five. So that's our KP, if we put it into scientific notation. Technically, we add the zero here to keep the sig figs constant. And we're gonna compare that to our Q, which is 0 0.00128. All right, so here we have our Q, and here we have our K. What we'll notice here is that our Q is bigger than our K. 
So that means we've actually run past the finish line of our reaction. And if Q is greater than K, our reaction is going to run backwards. So to get to equilibrium, what's going to happen in this gas mixture is NH3 is going to run backwards to H2 and N2. So that's how we can write equilibrium expressions using partial pressures.